You know, but it's not called a flu vaccine? Yes, it is. It is called a flu vaccine. You would get vaccinated for the flu. Yes. What do you mean? If anybody disagrees over COVID or over foreign policy, feel free to jump in general lobby and I will drag you the f in and we can argue over it. You guys have gone full retard over the vaccine shit and it is the most disgusting thing i've ever seen in my entire life like the amount of misinformation and medical misunderstanding that you morons have perpetuated because you get triggered uh on on twitter is actually insane i just want to say that like time has told that the republicans are truly the biggest snowflakes in the history of all of mankind like liberals will cuck themselves and will do stupid shit like kissing like people's shoes because they want to like worship black people or whatever that's cringe you guys are literally murdering yourselves like running off of cliffs because you want to prove how based you are thing i was uh like actually clueless to the fact that why it's called the vaccine if i was under the impression that a vaccine makes it uh impossible for you to contract the disease that would, or else what would be, be the point of it there's because talk to you about this nuance bro shit, okay before I explode. <laughs> yeah. I, i've been trying i've been like i'm just gonna be a bro i'm just gonna hang out yeah go talk, hit us shit. go do it wait, wait right, let me get it let me of course i gotta hold ask wait, wait wait let me sway up hold on okay hi hey man hey how was your weekend how are you uh it's okay well, what's up it's all right you had a good time yeah good good um i saw both your debates the um how do you pronounce that the second guy's last name is Matt Dillahunty? Dillahunty, I believe, yeah. That was excellent. Mm -hmm. um, back in the ye olden days when I was a uh, mid-tier Jordan Peterson simp, I watched uh, Peterson and Dillahunty debate, and that was like the first crack mm -hmm. in the the allure for Peterson because Dillahunty was just on a whole different level. Yeah. Um, that conversation was excellent. Cool. I imagine that that was the more fulfilling experience for you. Um, it was one that I read a lot of like papers and research and shit for, yeah. Have you two interacted before or was that literally the first time? No, nope. that was the first time. Dude, that, w that was really, really good. Um, the, uh, the Nuance Bro one, uh, that was the one I was personally the most excited for because obviously it was going to be more political and, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I don't follow Nuance Bro, but actually the first time that he came to my attention, you guys had a debate like a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought actually he performed pretty well. I can't even remember the topic, but I just I remember walking away. Might from... have been the first debate we had on basically stuff related to COVID or the coronavirus or vaccine. That sounds about right. Because it was, I know Trump played a huge role um, mm -hmm. in the conversation. And I thought he actually did pretty well, but I follow him on Twitter. Did you follow and... the second conversation we had? I did not. I did not. I Oof. thought this was the. I you thought this watched. was the second one-on-one -on -one conversation. Oh no! Okay. You should have seen the second one. So nuance, bro, is hard. Um, and I should have honestly, I should have been more prepared, but I just haven't been in these political spaces much recently. Nuance, sure. bro, is hard because he is unimaginably politically slanted in one direction, and it's not enough. Bit. I actually studied your the little bullet points that you gave me. Um, yeah. But that's actually not, it doesn't do anything because what happens is, is he knows all of the QAnon talking points for every right. single topic. So you have to go into and be prepared. You can't even really know a lot about the topic. You have to know the conspiracy theories um, because that's all he'll give you. And somebody like him, their goal is basically just to overwhelm you with so much bullshit conspiracy theory that you, um, that it's just impossible unless you're like really well versed in those areas. So I remember funnily enough, one of the things I said to him during the conversation was that like, I don't have it offhand, but when we finish debating, I'm gonna Google 48% miracle. Are, you think that was just happenstance? 48% on election days? zero problems during early first voting all, in Maricopa so County. Here's what I'm going to do. Come on, Here, dude. First of all, so Come after, the, on, after this conversation, I'm going to Google 48% voting machine in Maricopa County, and I'm probably going to find that it's of not that number. Of the election day I'm probably going to find that it wasn't that number. No, I'm probably it absolutely find that, was. that in one place they ran out of paper, and that got tallied into that. It wasn't number running one. out of paper. Okay. It, was light, two, it was light printing ink that then couldn't be read sure. by the Number two, by the even if what you're saying is true, wouldn't it make more sense for it to happen on election day than during early voting? Where in early no, voting, you've got people no. that are staggering in when you don't have as many people coming. They in. Wouldn't had it make more, sense that on a day on. when everybody's there no, 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 no. in a huge line and they have like- No, it happened at the beginning of the day. It was right from the beginning, dude. Okay. It wasn't and, 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 later and are, on. And then you are alleging that there was some sort of sabotage that happened. And 48% of Maricopa County's- just, I don't, I don't I'm clear. sure it's there's just a giant of, coincidence. Okay. It just happened on the so ones that were open on election day. some sort of with the Democrats to destroy all of these- No, I'm sure Katie stations. Hobbs, the person okay. who's in charge of running the elections, who just happened to be running for governor at the same time and narrowly won over uh, Carrie Lake. I'm sure that was just all yeah, a giant coincidence. I'm sure Dinesh D'Souza is going to have a documentary watching 
watching her running I don't, I don't like, every place, no, rigging, the ink, rigging the ink machines. 2000 like, Mules was horse shit. I was criticizing it right from the beginning. I don't like the, the Sousa docs, so that's okay. not me. Uh, back there. And, it and was. yeah, that was true. Actually, about I think almost every single topic he brought up was just conspiracy theory lie, conspiracy theory lie, unproven allegation. Like that's it, like over and over and over again. But yeah, no. So it was funny. So like his his persona is definitely different from, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to come off like I'm shit talking, but just call a spade a spade. You know, I my reference points are people like Lecture Fan and Rob Nor because I saw you know. When I first started following the space, I was following you and Vosh the most, and it was before Pac-Man and Brian Tyler Cohen. Mm -hmm. And so my exposure to conservatives was through you all, typically on Hippy Dippy. Yeah. And so it was Lecture Pan, uh, Lecture Pan, Lecture Fan, Rob Noor, Sprouticus, and uh, who's the one who wears the shades and yells a lot? Um, TV, CTV, CTV. Oh, oh, CTV, yeah. The yeah. Wolf Pack. And, yeah. and Counterpoints, and I, I like Counterpoints quite a bit, but... Um, Nuance Bro, like I said, I only had a prior exposure to him with uh, your first debate, and he seemed rhetorically very different, like very much a bro. Like I could see him be aggressive at times, but like he's not like he doesn't steamroll verbally for the most part. He's pretty chill, but definitely I saw some similarities between he and Rob Norb with respect to like these obscure this blog, this conservative blog on, you know, this uh, WordPress or wherever it happens to have these like screenshots about you know, uh, boxes of ballots yeah. shoved under tables and Ray Epps and yada yada. It's just all this shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you have absolute, uh, no one who follows this shit like has absolutely any deep knowledge on because again, it's this obscure blog. So yeah. I, d I did see that, but his delivery was very different. And um, yeah, basically everything that he said, I took like a, a zillion notes because I was like just getting triggered the whole time. Um, <laughs> He was, not only was he wrong on pretty much everything, but there were constant goalpost hikes. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, there were a couple. Like one that stood out immediately was when when he brought up election integrity, and you hit him with the facts. Like, dude, every time like we do any sort of like robust analysis on voter integrity, we either find none or find a Republican who does it. And Whoa! He just moved what right about an eighteen eighty seven? Yeah, right. Well, listen, <laughs> like, bro, I don't know. Yeah, sorry, God. Yeah, no, 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 no. You said you were like, you know, listen, voter fraud's not a thing, which obviously, you know. That's not accurate, but you were just speaking casually, and he was like, dude, stop it. What about 1948? What yeah. about 1876? Yeah. Like, oh, I, my bad, okay? But, I mean, no, it, it was it was absolutely absurd. So, like, I mean, even in order, like the inflation shit, uh, I, you made excellent points, but he was like, well, you know, Japan's inflation is lower than ours, but what about UK or what about Germany, both mm -hmm. of which are, like, at 10%. Yeah. And... Then, like, what was funny was, like, later on in the conversation, he was like, well, how can you really evaluate presidential performance? Because, I mean, they, they come into a certain context. I mean, this is true. This is, like, the most nuanced, nuanced bro was in the conversation. It's like, you know, they inherit certain contexts, and it's kind of hard to evaluate their, you know, how to grade them. Mm -hmm. But that that nuance, that charity was just completely absent when it came to any sort of analysis of Biden. It was yeah, and I was going to say, you might say that, but how much credit? Like, these guys always do. I think I predicted on the Republican panel I was on. It's every time. It's always true. These people are throating Trump on Twitter, okay? The deepest, the deepest of throats, the, la the least gag reflex people I've ever seen in my life are the people who are like, well, they don't support Trump as soon as they see Trump on Twitter. It's like unbelievable. Right. Well, well, he actually, it was weird. He seemed to, and, and actually, I'll be honest with you, this, this also kind of frustrates me a bit with conservatives. Like, I, I don't mind, like, casual conversations and, and joking about some of the shit, but, like, I actually did get, like, low-key, like, genuinely irritated when you were talking about the importance of a leader and decorum and character. Oh, like, that bullshit, and they're like, oh, well, I don't care, it's just funny. And it's like, okay, bro. Right. I mean, yeah. It's like, it's, but it's not. Like, I mean, yes, there there were times that Trump said things, even intentionally, that made me laugh. Like his his ongoing battle with, like, Elizabeth Warren, he would occasionally say some, some funny things, like, just in a reverent way. Mm -hmm. And then other times he made me laugh by saying stupid shit. Like, like when he was talking about that one hurricane, he's like, listen, this is one of the wettest hurricanes on record you know, from a standpoint of water, like that's something that left his mouth. He did. He was funny, but like, yeah. it, it, to me, it, for, especially for someone who's supposed to be a political commentator, which he is, for, for that to like, he 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 didn't. Def it seems like he didn't defend any of Trump's policies when the question was posed to him. Okay, well, 
I th- it was either you or, or an audience member. Like, how do you think Trump would have handled inflation in the pandemic? Yeah. He, cu- he punted. Mm-hmm. And so it seemed like, okay, well, the reason you voted for him is because He's he a controls the libs. Yeah. Because usually it's because the people are, like, super privileged or they feel strongly about, like, culture wars issues. Like, that's it. Yeah, it, it, it was just mind-boggling. Like, um, some of the other things he pointed out was he— the the four hundred thousand dollar tax hike thing that really pissed me off too because it's like well how do you figure well his inflation reduction act according to one analysis may effectively increase you know it may be the equivalent of a uh, tax increase because you know businesses will pass on the the cost of the the minimum corporate tax to consumer but it's like that's so dishonest to pitch that as he broke his promise for a tax hike like you could say the same thing about Trump's tariffs during the trade war with China that you know that that passed on to the American consumer the cost of that trade war particularly farmers but i guarantee you if you pointed that out he wouldn't concede that that was a tax hike mm-hmm. you know what i mean so just that shit was annoying um the covid deaths thing that was aggravating too he's like well you know you want to talk about metrics um more people died under Biden from COVID. Than Trump. Yeah, what a stupid. The COVID thing is always. It's that's just because that's the area where that's like my bread and butter now in terms of stuff I've debated, and I know all the obscure fucking conspiracies there. If I move somebody into COVID stuff and they start saying certain things, I know they're a bad faith actor. So like he he did the classic. He brought up that John Hopkins study that isn't a Johns Hopkins study. Um, he did the whole meme of like. Um, I'm not familiar with that one. I, I don't know about the. There's John, a study I, I, that proves that masks did absolutely nothing. There was zero point in any type of lockdown procedure ever. Like nothing helped at all. And it's a study by a few economists, one of which is a professor at Johns Hopkins, um, but they called it initially a, John, a Johns Hopkins study. And it, it's, it wasn't. And then like people have gone through and the methodology for this study is wild. Like they considered a lockdown anytime there was more than one non-pharmaceutical intervention in, in policy. So for instance, if you're it's like, if your city said you need to wear masks, they can consider that a lockdown. Right. Um, Even and it was, if there were no stay at home orders yeah, exactly. or, you and, yeah. know, whatever, just yeah. wear a mask in public facilities. Yeah. So it was just like, yeah. so, but I heard him bring that. And then there was a bunch of other, yeah, that whole Anytime it's the classic bad faith. If somebody ever says this thing, you know, not only can you ignore everything that I say about COVID, probably everything about politics in general. Whenever people say, oh, you want to see how good blue states did towards uh, the coronavirus? Look at New York. I just want to f-ing tear my eyes out. Are you f-ing kidding me? The hardest hit state that probably got it first before anybody knew there even was. Oh, God, it's such a stupid, mind f-ingly dumb comparison. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, is even if we accept the premise, which I, I, I am pretty sure, yes, that technically more people did die under President Biden's watch than Trump's, you got it was in spite of the th- like that's the that the critical analysis is what or the lack thereof is what pisses me off. It's like more people died under Biden in spite of Biden. The difference is that Biden took the virus seriously from the beginning. Mm-hmm. He oversaw a comprehensive vaccine rollout that was coordinated at the federal level. You even pointed out. He had that 100 million vaccination goal. He he doubled it mm-hmm. in the same amount of time. He made partnerships with Lyft and Uber and CVS, and he expanded all the pharmacy programs. I mean, so when people died, it was because red states in particular and Trump counties were refusing to get vaccinated. You had the onset of, you know, more transmissible variants, and the virus had just spread more. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's the difference. The reason people... Like, I don't know if you know this, but uh, uh, I'm blanking on her name. Deborah Burks. Deborah Burks, who was one of Trump's three primary uh, medical advisors when COVID hit. It was Fauci, Burks, and Redford, who I think was head of the CDC. Mm -hmm. Burks has written in a book that she's very confident that the first 100,000 deaths in COVID are attributable primarily to messaging failures from the trump administration that they they did not need to happen and that's the difference people you can make the reasonable argument that people died during covid because of shit that trump said and did and shit that he didn't say and do Mm -hmm. whereas i don't think you could make nearly as strong of a case of that for biden because the holdouts during biden's administration are red states yeah, people who are not listening to Biden, it's just, and it's, not cooperating. It's just the ultimate bad faith topic. Like it's just it's the easiest expose on like you're not thinking at all. And even when people say shit like it wasn't even that deadly, and it's like yeah, bro, but it was the most infectious virus in human history. It doesn't have to be dead that deadly. Like, or when people take like the one-off quotes when you can tell 
Oh God! The Biden said that if you Biden said you won't get infected at all if you get vaccinated, that it'll stop it completely. It's like he said one time it'll stop the spread, but like he wasn't clearly he didn't mean to say that like there's a zero percent transmission. Like he's never given that indication any other time. It's just so exhausting. Well, I, I did like have how, a question about that because yeah, I, I I did struggle to remember exactly. I mean, my God, it seems like you know it's one of those things that like in hindsight it feels like COVID has lasted your entire life. I, I can't. It's hard to remember a pre-COVID life. Were Fauci and others under Biden and under Trump saying shit regularly like get it and you won't spread it like yeah a little sure bit but if you're if, as long words. as you're not being a fucking moron right and you're not being bad right. faith it's obvious that like what they're saying is like if you get it the the risk of reduction will go down right right which is that is true yeah right. like imagine like you're going outside and your mom is like hey remember to wear a coat so you don't get sick. Like you could still get sick with. A do coat you turn coat. around and be like, right. "Mom, you stupid fucking? Are you trying to say that a coat is going to be one hundred percent successful right. in staving off disease?" Like, obviously not. That's not what she means, right? Like, what a right. stupid fucking statement. If you get vaccinated, you'll stop the spread. Oh, one hundred percent effectiveness in stopping the one hundred percent not. Tra like, come on, bro. Right. Nobody means it that way. Like, none of the data said that. Nobody was making that claim. Like, that's you just taking like the most unbelievably like childlike reading of a single quote I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, it's insane. So it actually reminds me of a conversation that you had my, with my buddy uh, Staxiums a couple of months ago, and this subject came up about um, precision with language, particularly on complex medical issues and pandemics like COVID. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know if this was the particular example that came up, but I know, I know one of your criticisms of medical experts, especially during the pandemic, like Fauci, is that very often they were not optimally rhetorically effective. Like they could have done and said things to better persuade the American public. And I'm sure that that's true. Mm -hmm. Do you, would you count this as an example of something they should not have done because you'd have bad fight, bad faith, hyper -literal Those types of statements? Yes. I, I don't know. I'm trying to do my best to be more rhetorically effective. And I think everybody should do their best to be more rhetorically effective, but you truly have to be communicating at like a first grade level when you talk when you talk to conservatives. It's very, 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 very difficult. Like there is like a special education skill that you need to develop. Like assuming my audience is full of people that have 65 IQ, like how do I phrase my messages? Um, it's That's a challenge. I mean, like I'm sure there are better ways to do it, but damn, it's like you have to imagine like every single statement you make is gonna be read in the least charitable way possible by a ton of people that are trying to make a ton of money off of like every single misstep or misquote or whatever like is it possible to av avoid all of that i don't know maybe do you think in, uh, why call a vaccine then isn't that the definition of zero percent no fmj literally go read a wikipedia article you uneducated moron like not that like you probably actually he probably thinks wikipedia is ran by the jews so actually never mind sorry my bad it's a yeah it's a george soros project <laughs> according to conservatives so um what's well it's interesting that because that's that's also something that I've had conversations with my conservative friends about where they're like, well, you know, it, when I think it was actually during a Brian Tyler Cohen debate with Michael Knowles, this came up. Michael Knowles tried to get him with a gotcha saying, well, everyone said that uh, the vaccine would stop the spread, it would stop transmission, but people are still getting sick. And, and Cohen tried to make the, OK, look, they are, at least according to studies, somewhat at the very least, the data shows, uh, even if it's in the short term, less likely either because they're less likely to get it infected in the first place or because the viral load is reduced on at least the initial variant. I don't think that was the case for Omicron in mm -hmm. particular, but um, the, the, there was this idea, I think, because like previous vaccines, I think the American public thinks that vaccines that you had to get in school wiped mm -hmm. those diseases out. Like, and would we say wipe them out? literally like zero cases yeah and i don't think that's true I, it's I, not for a lot of them it just it reduced to the transmission for a lot of them it just reduces the effects um right. for a lot of them it barely does both like and this was like this was the case for so long if you got a flu shot i think it reduced the chance of you getting flu to, by like was it 30 or 45 percent like flu shots were not these 100 percent like that's so stupid right. like i don't know if any of these people have had, had, a, had a fucking shot in their life with anything um like yeah i, I like it, the thing that triggers me the most is that we have like a huge fucking anti-vax movement now in the United States. And it used to be only dipshit, like holistic medicine, lefty vegans that believe this shit. Yeah. And now it's it like this huge- It was day to Jim Carrey, and I'm blanking on her name, but the-, the Jimmy McCarthy one. or whatever, or something? Jimmy McCarthy, yeah. 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 
I, I tell, I tell again, I, I tell my my right wing friends all the time that like you guys, you you are irresponsible with the anti vax movement. We on the left would like them back, please. Yeah, because yeah. we can we can contain them. You know, but it's not called a on. flu vaccine. Yes, it is. It is called a flu vaccine. You get vaccinated for the flu. Yes. What do you mean? What do you think a flu shot is if it's not a vaccine? It also presents an interesting counterfactual that if Fauci and others were more precise with their language and had not said things like, you know, if you get the shot, you won't spread the disease. If they did like that paragraph lawyer speak that you're talking about, you know, like the end of every mm -hmm. uh, every yeah, yeah. medicine. Uh, <clears throat> Side effects and other conditions might apply. You might blah, 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 blah. right, yeah. right. Yeah. But I, that doesn't even work. Look at the look at the Biden thing, right? With uh, even with Lex, right? Where Biden literally says, "Not right. all Republicans are MAGA Republicans. A, minor a minority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Not all Republicans. Not all, it doesn't matter. They still quote him saying like, oh, look, he says all Republicans are evil.' And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> no, that's that's true. But I was thinking of the even greater, or the more interesting counterfactual to me is if Biden had done that. Yes, you would have people who would just say, well, he he wasn't specific enough. But then it makes me wonder if there would have been people who would have said. He was so specific that he undersold the vaccine efficacy, which turned people away. He should have sold it. You know, if he was too specific, like, hey, look, there's no guarantee that this will work. You know, it just it, it increases your likelihood that you won't die or, or suffer serious symptoms. But, you know, we don't really have any data about his transmissibility and blah, 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 that conservatives would then turn around and say Biden didn't do his part to sell getting the vaccine and, and persuading uh, red states and red counties to get it because he made it sound like it was completely useless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if that would have, uh, we, we have no way of knowing, but it's an interesting thought experiment. Yeah. Who um, <clears throat> the other thing was, um, uh, which I, I don't know if I assume since this is more your wheelhouse, but like you do, you know, that about that thing that came out a couple of weeks ago and he re and nuance bro referenced it in the debate with you about how Pfizer came out and admitted that they had no data to test the, you know, oh, what would the, the what would like the global f reduction be or what would the reduction be in like right. the number of people getting sick in a community? Sure. Right. Now, my understanding is that in most vaccines, you have no way of knowing that until it becomes retrospective. Yeah, I have right? no idea how you would prospectively study that. Right. <gasps> oh, my God. Hold on. I think I actually did it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, what? OK, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. So I just want to make sure that that was the case. That was not unique to the COVID vaccine. That's pretty much every vaccine in general, right? There's no way to to test. Like, even if you— Yeah, I have no—I don't even know how. Like, could you even brainstorm with me? How would you ever conduct a study like that? Well, no, I can I think mean, of one way to do it. The way—the only way you could possibly do that, maybe, would be is if you literally, like, quarantined off an entire city— and then, like, tried to, like, vaccinate mandatory vaccinations on those people there, and then go, like— Right. Yeah. But the urgency of this particular, like getting this vaccine out because of how infectious it was, I mean, that, even if you could do that, that would have been out of the question, right? Because, you know, then the, that would have given the virus to spread even more unchecked, especially given how reticent people were to comply with lockdowns and, you know, particularly in red states and other things. Like, I think it, I imagine if we looked at it, you know, the, the Pfizer scientists, the CEO, like the FDA, they would say that the, the top priority was making sure that it that the vaccine could reasonably prevent or reduce symptoms. That was the priority, not whether or not it would reduce transmissibility. I mean, is that fair to say that that was probably their priority? Well, yeah, that's what they're testing, of course. When you're testing a vaccine, you're testing how safe it is and how effective it is at reducing infection or reducing the outcomes, the negative outcomes of sexual infection. That's what you would expect it to do, right? Yeah. Right. Some of the other things that he said that I took notes on that that was so okay, okay, all right. The char I got to go back to the character thing here. Uh, so when he said, I, I got the quote, actions and actions, <laughs> actions and how they carry themselves are important, but not how they're mean on Twitter, which is interesting because I would argue that that is an extremely important action. Like that's, he was the president of the United States. That was a major social media platform where he's broadcasting his rhetoric, his message, his attitude, being, you know, a lying dick on social media like that. I don't know how he divorces those two things. Like, it seems counterintuitive. Actions and how they carry themselves, but not how he behaves on one of the biggest social media platforms in the world. Wait, can you phrase it again? Hold on. I... So his his quote, Nuance Bro, somebody asked you in the audience, asked you both, like, okay, guys, how much how important is character to, the, to whoever is the Stop. president? Wait, oh, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Repeat what you were just going to say. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so somebody in the audience asked you and Nuance Bro, how important is character to the office of the presidency? And Nuance Bro said, well, like he kind of waffled. And then he was like, okay, well, actions and how they carry themselves are important, but not how they're mean on Twitter. Oh, sure. Which was like, well, that is an action. That is, more importantly, that is how they carry themselves. So it seems like that was like a mutually exclusive thought. Like he completely contradicted himself. Mm -hmm. Then he tried to say that bombastic, impulsive attitude is what helped him with North Korea. And Which he was just dead wrong on everything. Did nothing with North Korea. That, like there was zero progress made. And then he's like, "Oh well, they weren't shooting missiles." Blah blah blah. They yeah, were the Ukraine missiles. That's the thing. That's the big one. Well, I they know they were, were testing, it, but I don't know if they were shooting them specifically over South Korea. Not South Korea, yeah. but they did over Japan. I think, which is an ally. I think they were still times. shooting. Yeah, because Japan was getting really fucking irritated with our lack of progress with North Korea and the fact that we'd like been so buddy buddy with them without securing any concessions whatsoever. Yeah, one hundred percent. And they are an ally. So there again, it's just like very specific goalpost shifts. Like, okay, well, they didn't fire missiles over south korea okay well number one why does it have to why is that the metric like because they can that's fire the missiles one over thing. anywhere else but as long as it's not south korea and you know if if he had fired over south like if the the if the nations flipped hey real quick if, if anybody disagrees over covid shit or over foreign policy shit, feel free to jump in general lobby and i will drag you the fuck in and we can argue over it okay anybody in youtube chat or anybody in my dgg chat wait, what wow so true and based destiny half of the entire country is all wrong and there's no basis truly good faith you guys have gone full fucking retard over the vaccine shit and it is the most disgusting Thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like the amount of misinformation and medical misunderstanding that you morons have perpetuated because you get triggered uh, on on Twitter is actually insane. I just want to say that like time has told that the Republicans are truly the biggest snowflakes in the history of all of mankind. Like liberals will cuck themselves and will do stupid shit like kissing like people's shoes because they want to like worship black people, or whatever. That's cringe. You guys are literally murdering yourselves like running off of cliffs because you want to prove how based you are okay it is the most like thought terminating brain dead shit i've ever seen in my entire life holy shit go ahead sorry no it's okay to choose i, I want to make sure i i've got this stat right before i pull it up but I, I i thought i saw somewhere that uh it was twice the number of republican voters died during covid than democrat oh sure when it wouldn't surprise when they me. were doing the post midterms uh autopsy about pun intended about what happened during the midterms they're like well twice the number of Repu voting republicans died mm -hmm. compared to voting democrats so uh literally a death cult um but no i i just i really want to harp on that that he not only did they not accomplish anything it, it you could easily make the argument that that's part of the reason why you could easily make the argument that that is part of the reason why they are firing missiles now over south korea was because they're they were even more pissed off at the United States uh, after uh, interacting with the Trump administration. They, one fact that I looked, because I was curious, I remember reading about this, I looked it up. After uh, they had like two conversations with Trump, North Korea demolished a four-story joint liaison building that they set up <laughs> between themselves and South Korea. They, not, they just not only withdrew, they blew the fucking building up. Like Based. that's how... Like you could make the argument that things were are he left things in a worse position than he did when he first started interacting with North Korea. Gotcha. That's how bad okay. he failed. FMJ, what do you want? Hey, I just want to say I'm not trying to spread misinformation or anything. I was uh like actually clueless to the fact that why it's called the vaccine. If I was under the impression that a vaccine makes it uh impossible for you to contract the disease, that would, or else what would be be the point of it? There's because. The point is to, re one, reduce the likelihood that you get infected, and two, reduce the severity of the infection. There's no way to, one, generally, you don't 100% not get infected by things. That's, like, pretty rare. Like, even your own immune system doesn't work that way. I, I mandate it and take it to the the point of making, uh, taking people jobs and, uh, shit Why like mandate that? it? Be because it, for the two reasons that I just said, it reduces the likelihood of getting infected, and if you do get infected, it reduces the severity of it. Okay, you got that. Yeah, vaccine is just, it's just trying to. Well, wait, what is there? Is there a problem with either of those things? Like, no, I just clearly didn't. I just didn't understand. It does. It doesn't make that much sense to. Uh, when you, when people are all going to the hospital and dying, and we've got to pay a ton of money because all these people are sick and on ventilators and other shit going to the hospital. Why would we not have like a public health program that prevents people from transmitting the disease to other people? Because it didn't. It did, but it did though. What do you mean? How did it? 
But because it's, it's, in every community where people were more vaccinated, they were less likely to get sick. And when they did get sick, they were less likely to have to go to the hospital. Hey, can I say that from my experience, I've seen people who've had two vaccinations, all the boosters and all that, who still contracted disease multiple times. Yeah, but the the chances There's of them, one, the case. chances of them getting sick are lower. And two, the likelihood of them having a severe reaction is lower. I think that's I don't think the first part is true. Them not getting I don't think it reduces the likelihood of them getting it at all. Because okay, so, I've seen I haven't gotten vaccinated. I haven't gotten one shot and I haven't I haven't had one COVID symptom throughout my whole life. I've seen people with who have every booster and every shot get COVID two, three times over. Okay, over. so have do you seen, think that like wait the minute, immune... Have you seen wait, anybody wait, wait, who wait, hasn't gotten the vaccine wait. at all, kind of like you, get infected? Yes. Okay, wait, but hold on. Do you, do you think that, what, does the immune system does not work? Or what do you, I don't understand what your, what the claim is. Like, no, the immune systems don't do anything. Like... Wait, one more time? Are you just saying that immune systems don't do anything? I don't understand what the claim is. Why, why would Why? getting vaccinated and not reduce... Not with the, the vaccine mandate and the, the level that it was taken to. The reason why is because it was the most infectious disease in human history. I don't think that it was stupid and uh, jumping the gun to, to make a mandate and to take all the steps that they did and it didn't help. It did help, though. People that got vaccinated were less likely to have serious symptoms and go to the hospital. Communities that got vaccinated. Because I've seen people get it three, like I said, three times over again when they've had each and every booster shot and everything. Okay. Uh, Listen, I was watching. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait, wait, wait. How, what, what am I supposed Alex. to say to that? You've seen people that have gotten vaccinated that got sick. I'm sure there have been some, but we're talking about statistics. It's just my thought. Yeah, you're right. It's just what I think. Yeah, I just this is how I feel, and this is is obviously not changing it. Well, but I, but I you, well, hold on. But like, what? I, do you know people who've gotten into car accidents and they've had seatbelts on and they've still died? Yes. Can you compare that to me? I don't. Do, yeah. do does that mean that we shouldn't wear seatbelts? No, that, that I don't think that's the same thing. How is it not? Some Telling people that the, 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 the vaccine is not a seatbelt. It doesn't work at all. It it doesn't work at all. So you think if you got vaccinated, you don't think there's any reduction in the risk of getting sick at all? You think there's nothing? There's no change whatsoever? No, I don't. Uh, so okay, wait, wait, wait. Symptoms? What do you how, like? So then, I just the people's immune people systems vaccine. are just not working, or I don't understand how you can think that. Like. I don't think I, not the immune system. The vaccine is nothing. What do you mean by it's nothing? It doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. It's not a vaccine. It doesn't do anything. Does it reduce symptoms? You say you don't think it's, it prevents the spread. Do you think people who are vaccinated suffer from it? What? The symptoms are not. People who say that that they have they've had it and they say, but the, how are they going to? I don't know. They say it does. I, I believe. Should it we does. compare it to people who? who get the virus who are not vaccinated and see the disparity in the symptoms that they saw. Oh, because I think that the people who just, who still got the vaccine, they're still fucked up. I guess maybe not as much, but it doesn't like, not enough to, to, to warrant the, the procedures and all of that shit that went on. What procedures? The lockdowns and the mandates and losing your job if you don't get this. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, do you so you just don't think the vaccine did anything? Like, do you oh, know vaccines I, I, work? Or I, you don't think that's too far, and that didn't make sense. I, I understand what you're saying. It's just none of it is right, right? Like, okay. like well, I, I don't so understand you, what doesn't make sense about like you inject yourself with something, you get a little bit sick from it, and then your body has an easier time dealing with it the next time it gets sick. Like, how what part of that doesn't make sense? It doesn't mean a 100 percent chance of never getting sick again, but it means the next time you see it, either one, you're either not going to contract it at all, or two, if you do, you're going to have less of your symptoms. Okay, I don't think one is right. Because I'm telling you once again, I've seen people with the have every shot, every booster, and still contract it more than twice, more than three times. Ask Adam Twenty Two. He's he would at first when this first happened, he would literally he was arguing with everybody just just like this, and literally he's caught in the shit three times with every booster it doesn't make sense to me yeah, you can still get sick especially like when you're six months out from a booster you can also get sick and then get sick again right no one is saying that you can't get reinfected okay so then what's the point of the the shot can you answer that what's because the point of the shot? when you get vaccinated there's some period of time where you have a lower chance of getting infected and if you do get infected the symptoms will be less severe and you think that warranted uh when it's the Mandate. most infectious disease in the history of mankind and when it's like shutting down economies and when millions of people in the world are dying, yeah.
I think that our our reaction to it is what caused most of the the damage from it. Okay, so the million plus people in the how many people in the U.S. died? I don't know that number. I don't know numbers. I'm I just I'm going off. This is all uh, my experience, anecdotal, whatever you want to say. But I just it doesn't make sense to me. Will you at least concede that people who took the vaccine suffered less from the symptoms? The symptoms were less severe. I will not because no, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me because they still got it and they still got it multiple times over over. Yeah, but but the th like the the headaches, the fevers, the whatever, like the actual symptoms. I you, think that you... would lessen if you didn't get the vaccine because I like I don't know, I wouldn't be able to say because I haven't gotten and I haven't gotten the vaccine, I haven't gotten COVID, and I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to say. You, couldn't you compare the symptoms of the unvaccinated to symptoms of the people who are vaccinated? Yeah, they're reporting. Got it? They report, I guess, yes. I would be wrong. To, I would be stupid to say that they don't report that it's lesser. Yeah. Then what would it take to persuade you? You'd have to see, I guess, with your own eyes, a person who's unvaccinated who got COVID and a person who was no, vaccinated who got COVID actually, and compared the symptoms? I would, I would have to actually see it making a difference. I feel like it was way too much to, for something that did not help at all. Nice. All right, my bad. I didn't mean to trigger you, bro. Like, well, I was no, like the issue is that like you're 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 standing you in opposition me. to like you got, me. you got me. I did not I did not know that the flu shot was called the influence of a vaccine. I just googled that. You got me with that. I thought I've only heard it called by the flu shot. I didn't know it was called a vaccine. My impression was a vaccine would completely stop you from that. Hey, so no, I guess no, I don't I think there's it. hardly any vaccines that have a 100 percent success rate. Like there might be a few, but in general, it's not. But that, I thought that was the definition of the word vaccine. Is my that's what I'm saying. I thought that was what okay, your that immune vaccine. system is not 100 percent against things, right? Like when you get sick, you can get sick again by something, right? But if you got the for the vaccine for it, then no. If you got why do you the think? Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. Okay, why the fuck wouldn't an infection? If, it, if an infection doesn't give you 100 percent immunity, why would a vaccine give you 100 percent immunity? It's not magic. It's just your immune system both times. Why would a vaccine be 100% effective, but the infection wouldn't be? That's, I thought the vaccine was a medication that they created to prevent this. Not the, just the infection. I didn't think okay. they just infected you. Then, okay. All right. Good luck. All right. I don't, I don't know. Kill me. Um, I, wonder, <sighs> I, was gonna, I wonder what he thinks about like all the like the reporting around it like okay he doesn't see it with his own eyes but i'm curious like does he think that the doctors are lying that the uh, yeah there's a, i don't know there's this is it's built on like so much like miseducation and on and lack of understanding and kill me okay what, what else you, sorry what were you talking about no no i i mean we we basically got to the end of it i just thought that uh, he was full of shit the entire time uh, yeah, for real. Um, was. you already addressed the maricopa county stuff the ballast there and by the way uh, when the machines were on the fritz, uh, people were able to cast their ballots paper-wise mm -hmm. and put it in a secure box so it was counted. Yeah. So it wasn't like they were turned away. No, your vote doesn't count or you got to come back. Mm -hmm. Now, people did choose to just dip, um, but the option was there for them to do it uh, with pen and paper and uh, put it in a box. So, but uh, yeah, it was basically it. I thought, uh, I mean, you brought up a lot of good points. I was just uh, it was very frustrated with... Uh, all the pivots on his end and the goalpost shifts and, and everything else. And I don't, I don't think he made a single correct point other than um, the 1948 uh, Linda B. Johnson yeah. uh, Texas Senate race. Tell me about that one. What happened there? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. So he was, he was running for, um, he was running for uh, Senate in Texas, 1948. He was in the primary and he apparently was he was friends with uh, one of the local le election officials mm -hmm. and magically he got the uh, even though he was uh, behind in the polls he got the additional votes that he needed to secure the race and there were allegations of fraud uh, it went to the Supreme Court the Supreme Court determined that the uh, the executive committee of Texas Democrats could make the decision in this contested race mm -hmm. who would get the nomination and they went with LBJ uh, and of course, LBJ ended up winning the pri or the uh, general election against the Republican. That kind of started his whole political career. One thing leads to another, and he becomes president. And decades later, they they find I think it was like 1977, something like that. They found uh, like there, a guy admitted to um, creating the fraudulent votes 
uh, 202 mm -hmm. to uh, give LBJ the uh, the boost he needed to uh, to go ahead in the primary. So uh, that's a fairly textbook case, unless the guy's lying. I mm -hmm. mean, there's no obviously there's no like uh, video evidence or anything. But that was people are saying this was wasn't a public election. This was run by a party. Don't forget that. Right. Yeah. Ulti that's why the Supreme Court punted on it, and they were like the the Texas uh, the uh, some something like the Texas Democratic Party. Their their leadership ultimately made the decision internally to uh it was like i think by like one or two votes ironically between their committee members about who to give the nomination to and lbj got it i think by like one or two votes by the the committee gotcha. um but like <sighs> this, even that was frustrating so it's like okay you you cite these two examples i don't even know the the, the 1876 one i don't know what the hell that was i don't know if that was like rutherford hayes um that was the presidential election that year i, I don't know what he was talking about but mm -hmm. it's like hey, we talk all kinds of shit about the elections. We are denying its integrity. We're doing everything we can to foment doubt in the elections. Why isn't Biden ceding ground to assuage our fears? You know what I mean? Like, you created a problem. You have very little basis for it, if any, and that's being charitable. Yeah. And you're pissed off that somebody will not tackle your imaginary problem. Why won't Biden advocate for getting, in, getting rid of uh, mail-in voting and doing just in-person uh in-person voting and even when the election holiday thing came up it was because you suggested it like nuance bro it wasn't even his first instinct to say and then we on the the right will allow a federal holiday where nobody has to like you can just take off and vote and it's a, it's an entire day off like even that concession you had to pitch as a hypothetical sure like clearly the goal is just to suppress voter turnout all the way around i think he even gave the game away there when he was like well once upon a time, it favored Republican turnout, now, but it doesn't anymore. So it's like, okay, well, you didn't have a problem with it then, but you do now. So yeah. I don't know. Um, I thought I thought it was good. The Dillahunty debate was uh, I enjoyed a lot more. And uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, uh, right. not racy. If you want to hop into Discord, you're welcome next, my friend. Do I, guys listen? Do vaccines are not like medication that you eat. Okay, vaccines are little dudes. They go in your body. Your immune system sees it. They kill it, and then they know who to kill next time. Okay, that's what a vaccine is. But they don't always do the best job, and sometimes it takes them a while to summon the soldiers. Okay, that's a beautiful metaphor. Thank you. Is it somebody else? Is you have other election denier or not election denier? Vaccine denier, vaccine skeptic in chat. Um, we're waiting for it. That's not how RNA vaccines work. Yeah, that basically is how mRNA vaccines work. Uh, let me know of this guy. You excited for Georgia? Not so much. Did the Nebraska thing leave okay. you with a bad taste in your mouth, or no? Because I'm less like personally intertwined with this one, so it should be fine. All right, I don't think he's coming in, so I'm gonna dip. Oh, okay. And listen, it's good chatting with you. Um, mm -hmm. Glad you had a good time down there. Uh, thanks for listening to me rant about uh, nuance, bro. Yeah. Before you dip, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, in my mind, there's like a certain percentage chance of uh, this electionalism, this stuff like escalating into outright civil war. Um, not like a large percentage chance, but like what would you put that as probabilistically like before this election? Like in your mind, did you see like a serious threat of divides becoming so great that we actually escalated into another civil war? I don't know. I, I don't even know how you'd begin to predict that. I, I just in the abstract, I felt more that way prior to the midterms. And then after the midterms, it seemed like the vast majority of election deniers were repudiated at the ballot box. But that helped immensely. Like people like Kerry Lake and uh, um, the other guy running in Arizona and a bunch of others on, you know, governor's races, state secretaries of state, um, they were largely repudiated out of 300 plus wow frank af thanks for the hundred dollars my dude take this money in my state in georgia keep the republicans be safe stay dangerous to be quite candid with you i thought that uh we would see many more of them get elected than what were so uh, even though i'm a cynic by nature i i kind of walked away pretty optimistic about that and we still have to i don't i don't think that that is um i don't think that's sufficient to say we're we're out of the woods 
you know, I feel like we do need to pass federal legislation like the John Lewis Voting Rights uh, Bill and things like that that will take some of this discretion out of the hands of, uh, of uh, state legislatures. On state um, legislators, um, yeah, I, I read that they were trying uh, that Republicans were trying very hard to push for specifically more local control of elections. Did I didn't track that? Did much of that pass, or was that repudiated? Repudiated no, so along the, with their so candidates? the big one coming up is so Republicans right now are rallied behind a, a I'm not I can say every Republican, but many of them, and this is a case out of uh, North Carolina. Uh, it's called Moore v. Harper, and it's going to be litigated in front of the Supreme Court and. Essentially, the, the major issue in Moore v. Harper is this idea called independent state legislature doctrine. And the long story short is conservatives who support ind independent state legislature doctrine argue the state legislature, so state senate, state houses, whatever they are, should have the right to make their election laws and, in particular, draw their voting maps however they want. So they can gerrymander to hell and back, rewrite the rules of their elections, and do so without the threat of governor veto, as some states allow. So some states will allow a governor to, to veto uh, election maps or election laws. And more, more importantly, more dangerously, uh, state courts. So even a state Supreme Court. It basically there, would, it would eliminate checks and balances on the state level. Is even there signaling that would actually go through? Constitution allows for it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Would that like actually, is there signaling from like the... Republican side of the Supreme Court that they're actually taking that idea seriously because that sounds and Thomas, insane. Alito and Thomas in particular, and I think they're, I mean, they're the most right word of the justices. Um, but you got to remember, it's a 6-3 conservative supermajority, right? So they only need five. Um, and it's, it's scary that it comes to that because the other thing to remember is that Republicans control 30 out of 50 state legislatures. So imagine, so like, so, so I, some people will argue Hey, guys, don't worry about it, because that means the blue states can rewrite their election laws and they can gerrymander uh, conservatives in their states. Surely they'll play, play dirty. Surely. I doubt it. I, it seems like like Democrats are really reluctant to. I mean, Democrats do gerrymander. That is true. But oh, yeah, of course. Typically, when courts step in and, and strike down gerrymandered maps uh, on Democrats, they comply. But you have like even in this past election. I think it was I think Florida was a good example of this like Florida just ramrodded through um a gerrymandered map that cost uh that that basically shifted four seats uh for Republicans. So they're much more likely to play dirty. They're much more likely to take it further and then they're much more likely to have their dirty tactics upheld. So the fact that this will ride on, you know, two uh, really principled conservative justices at the state at the Supreme Court level. That's scary, man. It really is. And so um, the, the 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 funnier thing still is, even if the state constitution, I really have to emphasize this, even if the state constitution says that courts have courts and and the state governor have the right to veto uh, election laws and voter maps. Independent state legislature doctrine says that they can basically tell the Constitution to fuck off. It doesn't matter what the Constitution says. State legislature should be able to draw maps however they feel, regardless of what the law says. It would it would override it. So, random memes. Have you kept up at what? all? Random memes. Have you kept up at all on a shoe on head? Are you asking me or him? Either of you. Um, uh, that no. I I saw a video about uh, that she did. I didn't watch the whole thing, but it was something about uh, the information uh, censorship from the Department of Homeland Security on social media. That's apparently it. she had like another oops moment where she started. She does this weird thing where she I don't know why, but she's like obsessed with like LGBT people being like pedophiles. And I guess she had another oops moment where she amplified some kind of bullshit attacks. And I guess it got picked up by a conservative media again. <laughs> Yeah, I saw her Ooh. making some accusations of pedophilia. I assumed it was shoes, so it was probably stupid, and I didn't think much of it. Um, then she's, I started turning on Twitter. She's a troll, isn't she? I, I'm not. I'm not too familiar with her. She's like a. I don't think she's a troll. I think she's just really dumb. Oh. Like I don't think she's doing it deliberately to like troll the libs or epically own people. I think she just like sees the most surface level thing and just runs with it. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. On um gerrymandering, uh, I can't recall. I can't recall exactly how far back this was but I uh, the 538 project on gerrymandering showed that uh, Republicans had a really huge propensity for gerrymandering I don't do you know whether or not that trend continued like whether or not they ramped it up or ramped it down or 
Democrats move to match it? I have no idea. No. So, so like, um, so that's actually part of the reason why people are complaining about how Democrats underperformed in New York of all places. Like, uh, there wasn't much of a Republican red wave. It was more of a red spritz, but there was a bit of a red wave in New York of all places. They gained so many House seats, and it was because uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Um, I can't remember how many years ago this was, but he appointed, like he took he took the. <laughs> it's hard to imagine Cuomo being principled given all the scandal around him, but he took like um, a very principled approach to the idea of like nonpartisan judges and like bipartisan judges. So when New York tried to quote unquote gerrymander their voter maps, New York's Supreme Court just struck it down and made it much more equitable. So Republicans stood a stood a really good chance to gain seats compared to places like Florida. So yeah, Republicans have a higher propensity for gerrymandering. Democrats do do it, but they're less frequent. They're less egregious about it overall, generally. And they're less successful when they do it, which is basically, that's like a little microcosm of Democrats in politics. They, hmm. they do things less often, they don't go far enough. And then when they attempt it, they very often fail in terms of like political messaging and stuff like that. So, um, and it wasn't just Florida. There, there were like other states as well. I mean, this was, um, I mean, even if you look at the Senate, right? I mean, it's not so much gerrymandering there. I mean, it, it does happen, but like a statistic that should throw a lot of people off is like, we're not talking about the, the upcoming Senate starting in January, the next term of Congress, but this past one, people talk about 50-50 split between Republicans and Democrats, and there's not. Right, we have 48 Democrats in the Senate, and two, uh, like Angus King and Bernie Sanders, they just they're independents who caucus with Democrats. Right? I mean, but, it's not like they're ever going to be Republicans. Well, true, but but well, that was one interesting thing. But the second interesting thing is you take all of them together. You take those 48 Democrats and the two independents who caucus with them. They represent like 40 million more people, 40 million more people, in their states than the 50 United Republicans. And I, I think it was David Shore, he's he's this like political data scientist. He points out, and I, I can't remember what the stat was, but Democrats have to make serious gains. Like they have to overperform to break even in Congress. Yeah, I've like, seen that stat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy. So that's why like this Georgia canvassing thing that Destiny's organizing or bankrolling and Sedgen is organizing, but that uh, it's going to be so important because even getting that additional Senate seat is huge. Number one, that would potentially allow us to ignore Kirsten Cinema, Cinema thank or Joe God. Manchin. Oh, right. God. Right. I'm sorry, I can't make the joke. Um, oh. And then the other thing it could do is it, it lets you get certain things out of committee quicker. So like the way se certain Senate rules are set up, if you have a 50-50 split and the vice president has to break the tie, it has to go to the floor and it's like just this whole thing. But if we have an additional vote... Well, then we don't have to do that. And so it'll make it easier for Biden to basically pull a McConnell and cram the federal judiciary with whoever he wants, hopefully young progressives. So it's, it's really important. Like it some feels, people think like it's no big deal, but it really is. Is young progressives still really a thing? Because I was it was an article Steve brought up and I went through it um, talking about how so many progressive movements and organizers had just imploded um, just over the past few years, just destroying themselves is there still like really young progressive movements i, I feel like destiny would probably have more to say on that than i did because i think he was kind of the he suffered the the circular firing squad on the left where you know progressives just suck they their leaders sucked the people they had everybody in bernie's campaign was fucking insane they just they basically were just dispersed to the wind they had no organization nothing afterwards when well, brianna joy gray is basically like she makes me believe in horseshoe theory because she is she is so anti-Democrat, performatively at the very least, that she might as well be a Republican. I, I think she kind of low-key simp for Tulsi, and I think for Tucker Carlson a couple of times. Like, you know, like yeah, he's not good, but I don't think he's a, like I think his bigotry is overplayed. Um, she uh, there was a, there was another big one that she did not too long ago. I mean, she's she's got these really ridiculous takes on. Ukraine, um, dude. And... What is with leftists in Ukraine? Jesus Christ. Um, there again, that's 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 Destiny's wheelhouse. He's he spars with him. Would you even consider Haas and and the other guy uh, that you spar with about Ukraine, uh, Hinkle? Do you consider them leftist? Yeah, they're far left. Yeah. 
Um, leftist, like very far left populists in general, I think tend to be more isolationist. Um, so, yeah. Well, I was wanna... thinking about that like MAGA communism thing that they've embraced now. So it's like, I almost wonder if they've just gone so far left, mm -hmm. they've, they've come back right, or if it's just a grift, because I don't think that they're very serious about their beliefs anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm going to leave you to Destiny. Destiny, man, thank you uh, for the I just conversation. Want to take Four, that was a nice chat mm -hmm. with you, buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have fun. Nice, have a good rest We're of the watching night. Dune so we can all see how fucking dog shit that movie is. Okay. Actually, no. okay, real quick. Oh, no, Dune, Dune is good. Okay. Dune. It is so awesome. good. Okay, well, good. we're going to see. We're all going to watch tonight and find out. Oh, so. my what did you, Steve. what was your problem with it Dune? It was just dog shit. We'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? If you want. It's not a Marvel about. movie. There were no quips. Yeah, true. All right, have fun. I'll see you guys. All right, later. see you guys. Bye. Later.